Queens brothers in Texas. I certainly wish I could be there with you personally, but a video will do for the moment. I uh, wanted to share some great news that's happening uh, in our youth and family ministries around the kingdom. We just came off of our third international youth and family conference. It was a smash success. It was in Los Angeles this year. We had a thousand people attend. We've seen the conference steadily grow every two years that we've done it. Uh, the youth and family ministries around the world are gaining momentum, enthusiasm, excitement, and I would certainly say we're training people a lot better as well. We've also seen great impact in Johannesburg. Uh, teens are becoming disciples. Families are getting their faith back. And I think probably the most encouraging thing for me is seeing some of our older kingdom kids that have left teen ministry years and are coming back as campus students and getting baptized. So God is certainly working through our families around the world. I wanted to share with you uh, something we've been working on as the youth and family service team over the last couple years. And we've been trying to define what does a healthy youth and family ministry look like? Uh, what are the characteristics and how would you define it? And these are things for church leaders to look at and constantly be evaluating to see how well are we doing uh, in these 10 given areas. I think if these 10 areas are really strong, you're going to see great success in your youth and family ministries. The first one and certainly the most important one is that the Christian parents are committed and involved in the spiritual lives of their teenagers. There is nothing that will replace mom and dad being a great example and leading their kids spiritually and faithfully in the home day after day, modeling discipleship, modeling evangelism, and modeling the Christian life for their kids. Uh, obviously, it doesn't guarantee that our kids are, will do great things, but it gives them the best possible opportunity. The second thing is, we need to have a really strong teamwork between the church leaders, the youth and family leaders, the volunteers, the eldership. You know, one of the things that we find that is a lot of young guys that are doing youth ministry or youth and family ministry, they have ideas and they come back from conferences, they feel invigorated, they get excited about what they want to see happen. And if they don't have the ear of the church leader, if they don't have the ear of the eldership, and the parents, then it's going to be hard for them to implement, even if they do understand how to build a great ministry, it makes it very hard for them to implement it. So we really have to work together to constantly be communicating with that team of people. Uh, the third thing is that our parents need to regularly be equipped through the church leadership, through discipling and training. Obviously, uh, we've got to be offering parenting classes constantly, workshops, conferences, uh, helping parents really know how to raise their kids and training them. But I think even more valuable and more critical is the day in and day out discipling that parents get. And I know for me the most valuable thing as a parent of teenage girls is that every week I sit down with Justin and Irene Renton and we talk about our family. And I need outside perspective, I need help, I need guidance, I need direction all the time and I know we all need that but we've got to really make sure that's happening across the board in our churches. The fourth thing is that the teens themselves need to be regularly discipled and matured in their faith and a big part of that is how they learn to use the Word of God. Uh, we found a lot of teen ministries that end up doing things they bounce from week to week and they try to put together fun engaging devotionals but the content isn't deep and quality stuff. Our teens need to really know what it is that we're trying to instill in them and I think we need to have a plan. You know most of us have the teens for four years and then we send them off to the campus ministry or to singles ministry. We've got to think through what am I accomplishing in the four years that I have those teenagers with me and do I have a plan? Is there a Bible plan that I know I'm instilling the Old Testament lessons, the big picture stuff, the the New Testament? Am I teaching about Jesus? Are people getting their evidences, um, apologetics? Are they really starting to understand and know how to piece together all the things that they've been combated with in the world from evolution? Are we dealing with it and properly equipping them to handle it through teaching true theology? Number five is that we should be seeing a majority of our kingdom kids, the kids growing up in the church, 
becoming disciples, being converted in their teen years, and staying faithful. Now, that's not going to be true of all of our kids, like I said, in, in what we're seeing in Johannesburg. Some of the kids are going to be college age before they get baptized. But for the most part, we should be seeing 80 to 90 percent of our kingdom kids making it before they leave. And we should see that retention rate stick, that when they get into campus and singles and marrieds, that they're making it for the long haul. And that's something we should always be looking at. How are we doing? And not just how are we doing this month, but how have we done over the last few years keeping these kids faithful as they transition? And what lessons should we be learning if they're not staying faithful? Uh, number six really ties in with that, that our teens are successfully transitioning into campus or singles ministries where they go in as strong, faithful, giving disciples. I certainly could say uh, across the board about four or five years ago, a lot of our campus ministers were discouraged about the condition of a lot of the kingdom kids that were coming in. And that shouldn't be the case. We should see kids that grow up in the church come and be a strength, something that really helps to boost the morale and the enthusiasm and the evangelistic fervor of a campus ministry because these kids have grown up around the church and they have a lot that they can be giving. So that's the kind of kids we want to be sending out of the teen ministries into the campus ministries. Uh, number seven, we should be seeing teens and families that don't grow up in the church becoming Christians through the influence of our families in the church. And certainly if a teen family sees success in their own spiritual development with their kids, they're going to want to share their faith and we need to prod them to share their faith with other families. The families around the world, the biggest need they have is helping the, um, their kids to do well. And I would say teen parents um, probably see their need for God more than a lot of people do because they see the challenges of raising teenagers and they often feel very disconnected with their kids during those teen years. This is a time for us to shine our light brightly and that our teen family should be sharing with other families that we have hope because of Christ and training and we really have learned through the Bible how to help our families to do well. Uh, number eight thing we should be seeing is a strong spiritual connection with the relationships with teens, campus, and adults across the church. And this is, a, this is something I don't think we've given enough attention to. Building a multi-generational church. I know we think a lot about building multiculturally, and we should. And we should be thinking about, you know, spanning classes, so rich and poor. We should be thinking about all those things. But we've really got to think a lot as well about being multi-generational. Uh, meaning, how are we doing with our 60-year-olds and our 40-year-olds and our 20-year-olds and our 12-year-olds interacting together? Is the church a place for all of them? Do the teens feel like they have something to give? Is it their church? And there's a lot of ways we can incorporate this. We can have teens make videos for our worship services, help out with ushering, share their testimonies at communion, singing in the backup, you know, as backup song leaders. And I think we also have to encourage our adults to really be reaching out and building relationships with teenagers. Uh, we've got to build that multi-generation through a lot of attention that we give it as church leaders. Uh, number nine, there should be a really strong connection with our youth and family ministries locally and what's happening globally. And that means, um, you know, that our kids are really participating in Hope Youth Corps, Volunteer Corps, that they're serving in churches uh, around the world on mission trips. Uh, we've been encouraging teen families, if they can, to go and visit and help out in churches overseas, um, just to give, to spend a week on holiday, go and, and serve and give. Um, there should be a lot of things that they're involved with outside of their direct congregation. And that certainly means being uh, participating in the Youth and Family Conference. You know, we had, um, we had one in Boston, one in Chicago, and now one in L.A. The conference in 2013 is going to be in New York City. And uh, certainly we know in San Antonio we're going to have a lot of stuff to offer the families there as well at the Big World Conference that's going to happen in, in 2012. Lastly, and certainly not least, is the idea that we've got to have a dynamic, fun, and spiritual youth ministry. Now, we can build all this stuff with the families, but it's never going to replace the need for kids to have a place that's theirs, where they can come and have fun with their friends and laugh and do projects together spiritually and be involved in each other's lives. 
they need that special place for them and that dynamic fun youth ministry should be an integral part of what we're building so hopefully as you survey the churches in in texas uh, you'll be looking at these different characteristics and helping to build strong youth and family ministries across texas thank you it's great to be with you guys take care